Welcome to the Idiot's Guide. I'm Mackie Hall, and this is the follow-up video to our piece on creating checker patterns to make cool strokes and borders. All right, we're going to level that up by learning how to build this. Yep, this is where we create a complex border. Once you learn this, especially the Shape Builder tool and brushes, the sky's the limit on the types of borders that you can build. Here's the logo I built with these tools. All right, can't rant anymore. Let's go. Let's go ahead and create a new document. Our document will be 1,000 points wide. By 1,000 points tall, it'll have a single artboard. And if you scroll down, we will be building in the RGB color mode. Reason is, we're going to build this to screen, not to print. If you're building to print, always go CMYK. Let's get started. Before we continue, I want to mention that we're using the Essentials Classic layout. To switch to Essentials Classic or a comparable layout, all you need to do is go to the top right corner, select Switch Workspace, and then select Essentials Classic, or of course, the workspace that you want to use. Beyond that, I want to mention that we're using Smart Guides. All you need to do to switch to Smart Guides is to go to View, Smart Guides, or select Control U. With that being said, we're going to be using the bottom center of the screen to highlight key commands, tips and tricks, and hotkey recommendations. On that note, we're building this piece on a PC. If you're using a Mac, anytime we reference the control key, switch over to the command key. Again, command equals control. All right, let's get started. As you can see on the top right-hand corner, this is what we're looking to build. First thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and let's select our rectangle tool. Let's click anywhere on the artboard again, and let's create a rectangle or square that's 100 points wide by 100 points tall. That looks pretty good right there. Let's go ahead and change our colors to the default. Let's make sure that our fill is white and our stroke is black. We deselect, that's exactly what we're looking for right there. Now let's go ahead and make a couple of copies to this since we're going to make a step pattern. We need a square to the left and to the right. Again, our shape is 100 points wide. So we're going to select it. We're going to copy and paste in front. Now that we've got that, let's go ahead and select it. Let's copy and paste in front, again, using our key commands for that. We'll hold our shift key and arrow to the left 10 times, again, because our shape is 100 points wide. Looks good right there. Let's go ahead and paste in front again, and let's arrow our new shape to the right 10 times. Perfect, that's what we're looking for right there. Now that we've got that, let's zoom in just a little bit. That looks good right there. Let's get some circles into our piece right now. Let's go ahead and deselect our shape. Let's click and hold our rectangle tool and let's select the ellipse tool. Once done, let's go ahead and click anywhere on our artboard and let's create an ellipse that's 40 points wide by 40 points tall. Perfect. Now once we've got our shape selected, Let's go ahead and grab our direct selection tool. With that selected and smart guides on, that's an important piece right there, let's click on our circle center and let's drag it to the exact center top of our center square. That's perfect right there. And let's copy and paste our new circle. We'll paste it in front. We'll hold our shift key and let's arrow down 10 times to make it land on the exact bottom of our shape. Perfect. Now that we've got both of those, let's go ahead and grab our selection tool and select both the top and the bottom circles. Let's go ahead and copy and paste in front again. We'll hold our shift key and arrow to the left 10 times. That's perfect. Let's paste in front again, and this time let's arrow to the right 10 times. Starting to look pretty good. Now what about the circles in the middle? That's easy enough. All we need to do is select our two middle circles. We'll hold our shift key again. Let's double click on our rotate tool. Let's set our rotate to 90 degrees and let's select copy. There you go. We've got all the shapes that we need to create our puzzle piece. Let's go ahead and grab our selection tool. Let's deselect our piece. And let's go ahead and start moving our circles where we want them to be. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take our top outside circle, hold our shift key, arrow it up once, 
We'll go to our bottom circle. We'll do the same thing. We'll select that, hold our shift key, arrow it down once. Next, we're going to take our inside circles. We'll select our first one, hold our shift key, arrow it to the left once, again, holding our shift key. And we'll do the same thing with our left one. We'll hold our shift key, arrow it to the right once. Let's go ahead and deselect. And you can see our puzzle shape coming together. Now with our outside circles, all we need to do, let's go ahead and hold our shift key and let's select both of the top ones. And again, we'll hold our shift key, still depressed, and we'll arrow down once. Let's do the exact opposite for our bottom circles. We'll select them both. Again, we'll hold our shift key, but this time we'll arrow up once. Again, every time we hold our shift key, we're moving our elements 10 points. Now that we've got this set, let's go ahead and simplify our shape. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to start combining all of these shapes to create our puzzle pieces. Here's how we're going to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to select our entire shape just like that. And then let's go ahead and grab our shape builder tool. To create our leftmost shape, all we need to do is start on our square and drag across our circle, just like that. Let's do the same thing with our right side. We'll drag from our right square across our circle, just like that. Next thing we're going to do is let's manage our middle shape. We'll start at our top circle and drag straight down across our shape into the circle, just like that. Now let's go ahead and get to the business of deleting our unnecessary shapes. The way we do that is let's go ahead and grab our selection tool. We'll deselect our shape. And then let's go ahead and drag across our circles and press delete. Take a look, we'll do all four. That looks perfect right there. Now let's go ahead and increase our stroke from the one point that it is all the way to four points. The way we do that again is we'll drag across our shape. Let's go to our stroke on the top bar, and let's change our stroke from one to four. There you go, that looks perfect. Let's go ahead and deselect. That is perfect, but one thing we wanna do is we wanna prepare our shapes for being cut. To do that, what we need to do is change our strokes from strokes to fills while maintaining those stroke qualities. Here's how we're going to do that. We're going to drag across our entire shape, and then we're going to expand it. The way we do that is we go to Object, Expand, and note right here that our fill and stroke are selected. That's going to convert our stroke to a filled shape. Let's click OK. That's perfect right there. It's exactly what we want. Let's go ahead and deselect. Now, since this is a repeating pattern, we don't need the left half of our leftmost shape and the right half of our rightmost shape. How do we delete that? Piece of cake. All we need to do is grab our rectangle tool. We'll click and hold our ellipse tool and we'll select our rectangle tool. Once that's done, let's go ahead and hover over our left rectangle until we arrive at the anchor point of one of the circles, which is centered. Once we've got that, let's click and drag down and let's make a rectangle that's big enough so that it can cover the entire left half of our shape. Once we've got that, let's go ahead and switch our white fill to a black fill. We'll double click on that. And let's make it black. That's perfect right there. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to hold our shift key and arrow up until the entire left part is covered. That's perfect right there. Let's go ahead and grab our selection tool and deselect. Now let's do the exact same thing for the right side. Again, hold our shift key and arrow up until it is covered. That's exactly what we want. Now let's get to the business of deleting those parts that we don't need. The way we're going to do it is again using the Shape Builder tool. Let's go ahead and grab our Selection tool. Let's drag across our entire shape just like that. And then let's grab our Shape Builder tool and let's drag from top to bottom while crossing over all those unnecessary paths. Let's go. That's perfect right there. Let's do the same thing with our right side. Nailed it again. Now let's go ahead and grab our selection tool. Let's deselect. And then let's go ahead and select our rectangles and delete. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. One more step before creating our pattern, and that is adding color. Now let's go ahead and switch over to our direct selection tool. And let's go ahead and click on the fill of our rightmost shape 
And then let's do the same thing with our leftmost shape. Let's hold our Shift key, and let's click on our fill again. With both fills selected, let's double click on our fill, and let's change our color to orange. That looks pretty good right there. Let's click right here, click OK. That's exactly what we want. Let's go ahead and change the fill of our middle piece. We'll click on that, and let's do purple on this one. Let's double click. We'll switch over to purple right there. That looks excellent. Let's click on that. Let's go ahead and deselect. That is exactly what we want. Now let's go ahead and make our new pattern. The way we're going to do that, let's grab our selection tool, drag across our entire shape. Let's go to brushes, select that, click on the drop down, select new brushes, select pattern brush. Let's click OK. And there you go. Let's name this puzzle pattern. And then let's keep our scale fixed. Let's leave it at 100% for now. And then let's go down to managing our shape. Notice that our outside corner tile is set properly. Our side tile is set properly. Now our inside corner tile, let's switch that over. Let's click and hold that. And let's drag down to auto slice, just like that. That's exactly what we want. And then let's make sure we've got stretch to fit set and let's not change anything to do with colorization. Everything is perfect. We've got our key color set. Let's click OK. And now we can go ahead and delete the shapes that we made. So we've done that. Let's bring our entire page into view. And let's start with a square, shall we? So let's click our rectangle tool. Let's click anywhere on our page, just like that. Let's create a rectangle that's 300 points by 300 points. Click OK. Let's go ahead and center it horizontally and vertically. Don't worry about the fill or the stroke. All we need to do here is let's go ahead and click on our new pattern. There you go, it is in. However, it's way too big. So how are we going to fix that? All we need to do is double click on our pattern and then let's go ahead and change our scale. Let's start and bring it down to 50%. Let's see what that looks like. We'll tab off of it. That looks pretty good. In this case, though, I want to make it a little bit smaller. So like our previous pattern, let's take it down to 30%. Let's tab off it. That is perfect. Let's click OK. Let's go ahead and select Apply Two Strokes. And that is perfect. Now, notice that our fill is purple right now. Note that we can change our fill and have it not affect our brush pattern. Take a look. Let's go ahead and switch our fill to green. Click OK. And notice that our pattern has not changed. Now, how does this look in a circular pattern? I think it'll look pretty good. Let's grab this piece. Let's move it off to the side. Then let's grab our rectangle tool, select our ellipse tool. We'll click anywhere on our shape. Let's change our ellipse size to 300 by 300. I think that's called a circle. Let's go ahead and center it horizontally and vertically, just like that. And then let's again select our new pattern. We'll click on it. That looks pretty good right there. Let's grab our selection tool. Let's click off of it and let's arrow our square pattern clear of our circle just like this. That's perfect. Let's go ahead and deselect. That is excellent. Now what happens if we make our fill transparent? Let's check that out. Absolutely nothing. Our border is steadfast. That's exactly what we want. Let's go ahead and center our pieces. We'll select them all. Let's go ahead and cut them. Let's go ahead and paste it. That'll automatically paste to the center of our artboard. Let's go ahead and deselect. Check out the patterns we've made. That is radical. With that being said, you and I are done. Well done. Now that you know how to use brushes and pattern brushes, use this again as your springboard to create cool borders and shapes. Again, this is what I've built. Dive in and show me what you've got. If you have any questions, comments, or critiques, leave them in the comments section below. Otherwise, throw me a like, I'd really appreciate that. Otherwise, subscribe, I'd appreciate that just a little bit more. We'll see you next time, peace. <music>